Hello, hello, and welcome everyone on behalf of AWS India. I am Nitin Bhavankule, and I lead the digital native business for AWS India. Torchbearers Inc. is not just another talk series. It's a celebration of excellence, perseverance, and achievement. Qualities that resonate with each one of us, especially those who have embarked on the path of entrepreneurship and sports championships. We draw fascinating parallels between India's indomitable Olympic champions and the extraordinary entrepreneurs who have never backed down from challenges and set a shining example of triumph. Together, we come on this platform to discuss our excursions, the perseverance that fuels our passion, and the hustle that propels us towards glorious victory. In today's session, we are going to focus on how women are leading, scaling, and shaping our tomorrow in not only technology and entrepreneurship, but also sports. In the last decade, we've seen the rise of Indian women entrepreneurs. This entrepreneurial blueprint of India is undergoing a radical shift. It's invigorating to witness women not just participating, but spearheading initiatives across diverse sectors, right from textile, the traditional textile industry, to the pulsating rhythm of information technology. A significant driver behind this change is education. India is home to 43% of women STEM graduates, far outpacing the developed countries like US, Canada, and the UK. And this number is only growing, thanks to incredible initiatives from the government like Vigyan Jyoti scheme and Pragati. But like any story of success, there are challenges. Financing is a massive hurdle, especially for women looking to scale. Yet India is stepping up here too. The Mudra scheme, Dena Shakti scheme and initiatives like Her Start are all testament to it. It's heartening to see that in 2022, 16% of India's total funding went towards women-led companies. This shift signals a brighter, a more inclusive future for our startup ecosystem. As we search forward, it's essential to remember that nobody can clear, climb a mountain alone. Community building has been crucial. Platforms like Mentorship by NASCOM offer women a space to connect, learn, and grow. In this networks, women find strength, camaraderie, and most importantly, recognition of their own potential. Now, let me talk about how AWS is contributing in this space. Women contribute 50% of the world. If they are not part of the decision-making process, especially in tech, it's a missed opportunity. 50% of the customers technology company serves are women. By not having their perspective in development, we will risk losing out on empathy, innovation, and long-term growth. At AWS, we've always been committed to support, supporting and elevating women founders. This commitment has birthed Accelerate Her 2023, a collaboration with Lightspeed. This program aims to provide mentorship, technical resources, and a platform for women-led entrepreneurship. Today, it is my honor to initiate this discussion with woman co-founder of one of the most iconic digital startup, Nika, Advaita Nayar. She is also the CEO of Nika, Nika Fashion. Joining her is the remarkable Mary Com, an Olympic medalist in boxing. She is the only boxer, male or female, to win eight world championship medals. This Torchbearer series is moderated by none other than Shamal Vallabhji, a sports scientist and a high performance coach. Shamal is the perfect guide to delve into the captivating stories of our distinguished speakers. Get ready to be inspired, motivated, and invigorated by the incredible stories of these two ladies. Over to you, Shamal. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nathan, for that beautiful introduction. And welcome, everyone, to Torchbearers, brought to you by Amazon Web Services and Neo Neek. I always begin the show by telling everyone what a torchbearer is. A torchbearer is someone who inspires others by leading them towards a valued goal. And as a part of this series, it's very unique because we bring together India's elite unicorn founders with the athletes who've made India proud on the Olympic stage. I've been hosting the show for two seasons, and today is a truly hallmark episode because for the first time, we have two female torchbearers on the same episode. My name is Shamu Valji. I'm a sports scientist, a psychologist, and a performance coach. 
and I'm delighted to be your host for today. My job is to use all of my knowledge and experience to weave a conversation that unravels the journey behind these remarkable women. We're going to try to understand how they harness the full power of a support system, how they build a team, how they motivate a team, where do they learn from, how do they stay mentally ahead of the game, and most importantly, what is the cost of success? Torchbearers is about unraveling the journey behind the success. And the topic for today is leading with grit and agility. So as you've heard, our first guest is the only woman to win the world amateur boxing title six times. She's the only female to win a medal in seven, in her first seven world championships. And the only boxer, male or female, to win eight world championship titles. She's won 13 gold medals for India. She's a recipient of the Arjuna Award, the Padma Shri, the Padma Bhushan, and the Padma Vibhushan Awards. She's a member of parliament, an athlete, an Olympian, most importantly, a mother of four. Please join me in welcoming the truly amazing Mary Kong. Mary. Our second guest is the co-founder of one of India's largest unicorns, the beauty and fashion startup, Nika. Advaita Nair was an MBA graduate who left a high paying job in New York at the tender age of 22 to join her mom in co-founding what has become one of India's truly iconic entrepreneurial ventures. Re Nike recently turned IPO, making it one of the most successful startups to come out of India. Under Nike, Advaita launched the Nike Fashion, where she's become CEO and not launched numerous other trendy brands that have slowly disrupted high street fashion in India. Please join me in also welcoming to Torchbearers, Advaita Nair. Okay. I have one more exciting thing before I bring our guests to have this chat. It's today, for the first time on Torchbearers, we have a very, very exciting competition. So I want you to go and follow AWS Torchbearers on LinkedIn like that. And throughout this conversation, maybe take screenshots or take notes of your favorite moments. Go onto LinkedIn, comment on that and use the hashtag knocking out stereotypes and AWS torchbearers because three lucky people are going to get the chance to win a pair of signed gloves from the six time world champion, Mary Kong. So I hope you're going to be excited about that. And I'll keep reminding you to keep sharing on that. I'd like to welcome Mary and Advaita onto stage. Welcome to Torchbearers. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you so much. Mary, let's kick it off with you. Mary, can you please tell me, what did support look like when you were growing up trying to pursue a career in sport? What was your early development and early support system like? Uh, Mary, I think you're on mute. No. Yeah, now? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, okay. we can hear you now. Sorry. Uh, honest, honestly speaking, yes, when I am trying to pursue my career, especially in sport and again uh, in boxing, it was quite tough. Uh, it's it was quite hard because we coming from very humble background, and uh, of course, uh, even though my parents are also not aware about the sports, uh, a few I I can say few sports are they are they are aware, and uh, especially boxing though they are out of you know, <laughs> they they even know that. Boxing is also a part of sports. Yes, they know about men, but uh, 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 it's not women, you know. They don't know about the women. And uh, slowly, slowly, when I, uh, you know, I feel that, you know, uh, I, when I grew up sports, even I also don't know about much, uh, 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 much about in boxing, whether either this uh, game is uh, introducing, uh, introduced, Boxing or not, men already, uh, I already knew. I heard so, so much about, even though uh, Muhammad Ali, 
uh actually mohammad ali uh, he is my hero he is my you know everything uh, sp- inspire i inspire by him only from uh from him uh, actually i started my career uh so uh initially it was quite the uh, my parents won't uh, allow me uh, you know at the same time when i uh, 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 win uh, winning in a state championship uh, uh, uh even though i hide everything i started or not you know even i do, I, I didn't tell my parents i even tell my parents also i started my career already and when i uh, 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 uh you know achieve in state state level so it's coming it's coming out in the news the uh, newspaper a local newspaper so and even though they are not uh, you know happy at all even i am already into in boxing or not they uh, haven't know that no idea about that yes i already into in athletic uh, for the last uh, before actually before boxing uh, I, uh, uh, I think it's two months three months back but uh, they didn't know about boxing uh, you know uh, i took up and uh, yes <laughs> and I, they saw in the newspaper and they realized that this is not uh, you know uh, th- this is not my daughter actually the paper also it's not clear the picture was not clear at <laughs> all so they are so confusing but mary com mangte chungnaya mary com is a long name actually I'm so sorry for that uh, uh, later on i changed uh, you know it's very short mc mary com so uh, the, that the started i started the journey i pursued the journey from that only it's tough very hard but uh i am so happy that you know uh, uh at least be, uh, becoming uh, become becoming from very humble background uh, i couldn't get that much support also but that uh you know that much support from my family slowly slowly and i uh, uh, uh you know uh, uh right, like 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 what you say uh uh, uh, uh request you know i ask the permission uh a request and yeah. permission is the most important without their permission without their be- blessing actually pre- parents blessing i i don't think we will able to succeed in 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 life but the blessing of later on i uh, you know feel that you know at least i've already started this career and it should i should i should ask uh, the blessing to them so that amazing career start yeah <laughs> that's how the career started now mary yes. amazing and to everyone listening out there mary said certain few things that are really really important which really and truly resembles the journey that many female athletes go in the country they are pursuing a sport that is in the shadows their family their support system the people that they love don't even know they're doing it and mm. it really comes out it breaks into light through the successes that get published in two papers and as nitin said in the beautiful introduction that the entrepreneurial journey of women is starting to break through in india and hopefully through this conversation we can spark some interest to get that same level of support for for athletes coming out of india as well advaita let's bring you into the conversation it's been a beautiful journey for you over the course of this journey with nika how has your definition of success changed Yeah, I think uh I think that's a really deep and and great question. I um you know, I think uh I think the journey has been obviously um you know, really interesting and caused a lot of self growth. Um I would say sort of in the early days when we were just starting the company, um success was the literal definition of success, which was to make sure that the company got off the got 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 off the ground, got onto its feet, um that you were able to scale. It's just that typical definition of success, of scale and success um in the very literal sense. I would say that as the journey has continued and we did find sort of the literal success, I would say sort of the goalpost for me has shifted a little bit. um you know i do think a lot about how we can make the company a great place to work for the individuals who work there i often tell my teams and and people around that if it's not a wonderful place to work if it doesn't have the right culture if it's not great to its people um and if it's not like you know the go to destination for employees then i think you know the rest of the success doesn't really matter so that's one way in which my success is definition of success has evolved and i would say the second thing for me personally as a human being um my definition of of success is sort of now more about 
just being a better version of myself every day and that's um it's just sort of an internal goalpost i think it's a lot less about external validation it's a lot less about what other people think and it's more just uh deep inside are you really doing a better job every single day in every way personally professionally uh in terms of furthering the values that you believe in thank you so much i mean that's a beautiful definition because in every journey athletes see it all the time and i think people don't really view it from an entrepreneurial standpoint they always see valuations and judge things on valuations but they don't see the internal struggle and the growth metrics personally until platforms like this really and truly bring it out there mary coming back to you i want to talk about you know one of the main challenges that when we speak about women athletes when you speak about women entrepreneurs is the balance of roles and responsibilities you know you are have been an inspiration for longer than a decade and a half to winning right at the forefront in it i remember when i was sharing a stage with you where you'd even retired and then come back because you saw people training and you realized listen i still got it in me i can still win you came back and you won another world championship in there but at the main time every single time i've traveled with you i've seen the family being there i've seen the kids there i've seen you be there for them and for the people in your academy how do you balance the roles and responsibilities of motherhood being an inspiration in the country with the time and demands of training and staying at the pinnacle of your sport yes samal uh, uh actually uh, the ba- balancing of course after uh, you know marriage and after the kids so uh, it's so hard so tough how uh, even uh, i don't know how uh how can i explain to you uh uh you know when we talk when we talk when we speak and that is i think it will be very less for me in reality what i did it is so tough so hard i know and i have that experience that after four kids and come back and again of course uh, you know uh, 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 uh you know perform and uh, it's an, a not not a easy task at all but if i say uh, uh 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 there is you know there is a uh, there is a will there is a way actually there is a will there is a way i am so blessed that you know i'm so blessed that uh, god is so kind for me and whatever i do uh, you know uh, so uh, so many years in my boxing career fighting 20 years is also it's not a easy as a, as a girl as a mother as a, you know as a woman so uh, uh it's very difficult physical physically uh, actually in, in in sports especially and and it's very difficult i have to sacrifice so many things so many things when uh, uh, after deliver and come back and again you know the long period preparation going it's not uh, uh, just uh, one month uh, 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 like uh, uh, prepare and competing uh, in the next month it's not, it's not like that also I have, we have to prepare uh, 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 you know very hard uh, it, it, it's a long process it's a uh, one month two month three months it goes like that so uh, uh uh god one uh, uh, already mentioned that god is god is so kind for me i don't have any injured like you know during my preparation during my competition and i full focus uh uh uh, uh full prepare and um, come back and that is the you know uh uh uh, uh that is that is uh uh i feel that that i feel that is so proud to be proud to be a woman and proud to be proof and uh, proof already and again after a motherhood also proof that is a, a amazing uh, journey amazing uh, you know a wonderful you know ex- have experience in my life i so- remember when i was spending some time with mary to everyone i was saying you know the kids were always around and <laughs> she once told me that uh every single day every single practice the energy that she brings to every practice is the lesson that she wants to give to them and this reminded me of a very powerful saying that we use when we talk about children we talk we say what is caught is more important than what is taught which means what they see you do 
and what they absorb through seeing is far more important than what you'll ever try to teach them. And Mary is a very, very beautiful example of that. Advaita, you know, the beautiful thing about sport is that we know what we're dealing with. It's a finite sport. You know when it starts, when it ends. You know how long it is. You know who your competitor is. Everything that's coming at you, you know, so you can prepare for it. Business is a little different because you don't know where your competitor is. You don't know what they're going to throw. They're even playing by a completely different set of rules. So as a woman entrepreneur, and I say woman entrepreneur because, you know, entrepreneurship is not a gender specific thing, but you deal with so many other battles, things that are getting thrown at you. How do you cultivate the mental toughness to deal with multiple adversities on multiple fronts as someone who's scaling every single step of the way? Yeah. Um, you know, I think one of the core mantras that I've learned through the journey is just that business is a very long term um, sort of journey and you have to really Think of it as a marathon, not a sprint. You need to be able to do it for a couple of decades. I think great businesses take not one year, five years, not even 10 years. I think they take a couple of decades. And I think if you want to really do it well, you need to make sure that you don't get burnt out and you have the resilience to be able to do it for that long of a time. So I think, um, you know, for me, when that shift happened from being a short term oriented thinker to a long term oriented thinker, uh, the whole journey became a lot more sustainable. And uh, when you kind of make that shift, you're not, you know, freaking out of the recent um, something that your competition did or something that happened in office or something that went wrong. It's sort of like, look, this is one little step on this, you know, hundreds of thousands of steps that you're going to have to take on this journey. So just always keeping it in perspective has been the you know mantra I've, I've sort of come up with. And I think... Um, Another thing I often fall back on, I'm sure it exists in sport. I think it exists in every aspect of life is that after every high, there's a low and after every low, there's a high. So just being a little spiritual about everything. Um, if you don't have a great quarter, if you get something wrong, just knowing that you know the, the low is sort of temporary and after that, there will be a high and vice versa. Thank you so much. I mean, I want to stay with this word spiritual. Uh, do you have a strong spiritual practice? Do you have something that grounds you? And can you share a little bit of light on what's it like having your mom as a co-founder? And is it an advantage or a disadvantage? So one is the practice that grounds you because your answers are very beautiful, you know, to be able to look at something long term and be able to keep the distractions at bay for that, to be able to remain grounded, to be able to see the growth of your people front and center with everything requires a certain level of grounding. So do you have a, a spiritual practice that you rely on and, and where do you cultivate that? You know, I think I've always been drawn to spirituality, um, like from a pretty young age. I just think that you know, I, I feel like I've been really fortunate. Uh, like Mary was saying, I also feel so fortunate in, in every way in terms of how I was raised, the opportunities I was given, the success we found with Nika. But as a human being, I've always been very sensitive to sort of the struggles of others and the struggles that one sees in life around them. And I think, uh, you know, it's that extreme sensitivity, which I think leads to a bit of a spiritual bent of mind. So, um, I would say I'm very spiritual, but it's not in the form of a particular religion or a particular uh, sort of practice. But yeah, I, I do think a lot about spirituality. I, I cultivate sort of my own philosophies, if that makes sense. I think switching over to, I guess, what is a more fun question for the rest of the audience is, um, what's it like working with my mom? I love it. I think, uh, as Mary was just saying that, you know, and as I think about maybe one day being a mother myself, like uh, it's so important to have an amazing role model. And I think mothers can be that role model. And from the from my entire life, my mom has been my role model. Um, yeah. And so she's just with ev every single day of, you know, me being alive and watching her, I've just had so much inspiration from her. It's, work is, you know, just the last 10 years. But uh, I'm 33 years old. So for the first 23 years, it was everything else. It was how she conducted herself at home with the family, with her friends as a daughter, how she treated other people, her joy for living, very adventurous. Um, so she's just a wonderful person. And I think I'm really lucky to get to work with her every single day. We don't have we don't fight. We're actually always aligned. We, we, we think similarly. Um, I think the, the joke in the office is I'm a little bit of like her clone. So I, I think she's just taught me exactly how to think like her. So uh, there's not really that much uh, dispute or anything. 
Oh, that's amazing. I think that was one of my questions because that's something that everyone is interested in. Mary, this may be a little bit of a, a tough one, but a fun one. 30 medals, numerous championships. Was there a favorite win in all of these? Was there one that was absolutely special and why? Uh, maybe the Olympic. Because uh, I have been, uh, you know, winning uh, how many times already? Uh, three, four, three, four, five times. But uh, it is at the same time, I am not that much popular because uh, boxing was uh, uh, known only in the, uh, you know, when we, when we, when we uh, win in the Olympic Games. So I think it's the Olympic was the uh, very special for me. At the same time, the movie, the biopic also come out, and you know, uh, it reached every corner of in in India actually. So the um uh, from the movie actually that uh people have uh, known so much, uh recognize, acknowledge so much about my journey. So that is, uh, uh, you know, it uh, means a lot for me. Uh, 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 Olympic medal is very special. Amazing. Of course, of course. And I remember uh, spending some time with you in the Olympic village there, watching you prepare. And if you watch a boxer prepare, it's the most remarkable thing, you know, because they have a weigh-in, I think it's 24 hours before. So there's this rush to get two kgs off. So they're running and sweating. It's the most <laughs> remarkable. It's it's religious in some shape and form with the re regards to the discipline and dedication that's brought in there. Thank you. So Advaita, you. you founded a startup in fashion and beauty. It's been going for more than a decade right now. You know, how have you seen the young girls or women's definition of beauty transition or transform over the years? You know, has it shifted? And what is what do you see as Nika's role in terms of highlighting outer beauty, inner beauty, and cultivating an ecosystem around that? Yeah. So, um, you know, I think there are two levels to answer this question. Uh, again, one is sort of the literal and then one is um, sort of the derived. I think the literal is, of course, the the relationship women have with beauty products has changed in the last 11 years. Um, the Indian woman is definitely a lot more sophisticated as the number of brands and the categories have increased in the country. So we've seen definitely a um, sort of... Uh, beauty rituals and so forth increasing. So so the sophistication in beauty has increased for sure. But I think um, sort of a more derived answer is even 11 years ago when we started, the Indian woman was in kind of a beautiful spot when it came to, came to the relationship with beauty. Even back then, I absolutely re remember, and you know, we also as women of India, we felt that um, the Indian woman even then was talking a lot about beauty for herself, um, uh, you know, authenticity, confidence in oneself, um, and living and loving her life and therefore using beauty products for whatever aim she wanted. It was never about impressing mm -hmm. anyone else. It was never about uh, serving someone else. It was really always for her. And so I think that is something that was most definitely prevalent 11 years ago. And we kind of, obviously as women, we also relate to that. We, we like that definition of beauty, um, which is about women sort of being the stars of their own show and being in the spotlight. Uh, and so we sort of leaned into it. But I can't take credit that Nika did that transformation. And I also uh, don't, I think we've been fairly consistent. Like the Indian woman has been saying that for 11 years. So I don't think there's too much of a change in that regard. So I, I know the answer is a little bit confusing. Um, but just to summarize, what I'm saying is that I think the Indian woman has been pretty evolved in her take on inner and outer beauty for the last 11 years. We spotted it then and we still see it today. And just to stay with you, Adrika, how have you been, what's the role of technology in getting to these and, and using technology in the startup? I know you're an e-commerce platform, but how does technology help you inform about the trends, the decisions people are making, and whether things are shifting in the right direction in terms of the way you all would like it to? Yeah, I mean, I think that um, technology and data drive absolutely everything we do. Like we are a retail company, we are a beauty company, but we are most definitely powered in every single way by technology. Whether that's how the apps are built, how you discover new products, whether it's about the delivery backend, whether it's about the customer service. So technology and data have been a ma have played massive roles in, in our success. 
I think even Amazing. in terms of how we've scaled up, a lot of that is due to technology. Amazing. And is it a massively, massively disproportionate number with respect to female versus male consumers on your platform? Yeah, it's like predominantly a very woman-centric experience, both the beauty yeah. app and the fashion app. Um, I would say like probably 80% or so is a, it's women. Amazing. Uh, Mary, coming back to you, uh, I think people are aware of certain of the challenges that female athletes face in India. But you sit as a member of parliament, you sit on numerous bodies, and you are discussing a lot of things that people are completely unaware of. What are, you, what are the areas you feel we really and truly need to improve on right now to move women's sport forward in the country, to create better access to facilities and to create more opportunities. What is the, the main target area if we look at maybe for the next two to three years out? Uh, uh, yes, uh, I am okay, uh, actually looking to in naughty side, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. Uh, and also uh, south side, uh the remaining the remaining of the state like uh, uh delhi and uh, 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 punjab uh, that uh, and haryana already exists I, I think so far and some of the states states are, are still lacking uh in north east side and the south side so uh i think if you can uh, look into uh, look into more in this uh, particular states uh that will be great i i hope the government if we uh do something you know upgrade uh facilities uh, uh you know uh, uh so that maybe uh this these two uh maybe we will have uh, uh many you know a ch champion many many champion from this two state so so far uh other state also maybe some uh, I'm not sure that you know others uh, state also maybe it's still lacking. I because I cannot uh, you know I've not uh, been there. I cannot visit uh, every every corner uh, you know of the center in 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 India. So uh, well, in my suggestion, in my advice is of course uh, government has always also doing uh, 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 you know uh, for the last many years that support. Uh, and and uh, uh, facility infra everything is already uh, 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 you know uh, already given and I if we if we get more facility and uh, of course this time the uh, uh, the Asian Games so also the me me medal tally it's an increase for the last you know Asian Games and the Commonwealth Games also uh, for the last Commonwealth Games and uh, these common uh, uh, Commonwealth Games and the Asian Games also medal tally wise is all increase so I wish and pray that in the Olympic game also coming Olympic in the Paris that will be also you know uh, uh, if if we able to get uh, kind of uh, uh, you know uh, medals a lot in uh, a lot in our country. I will be so happy and so <laughs> so 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 I will be so happy that that, that I, I pray and we said. So Mary, so we've got we got a question that's coming in from the audience here, and this is uh, very okay. interesting. And I'm and I'm smiling because I remember there's a quote by Mike Tyson that says, "Everyone has a plan until you get hit in the face." <laughs> and the question is, how does one remain, how do you remain focused and calm under pressure? And, you know, remain focused and calm in business, remaining focused and calm in a game that doesn't mm -hmm. have contact is a little mm -hmm. easier. Remaining focused and calm when in a contact sport where you're getting knocked back is a completely mm -hmm. different ballgame. Do you want to let us know, you know, for example, if things are not going according to plan, how do you reset the mind in that moment and come back and remind yourself of what you need to do? Well, uh, of course, uh, you know, before we go for any competition and especially uh, uh, official like uh, Commonwealth Games and Asian Olympics, these are the men, you know, the pressure uh, uh, already we had. And 
of course i already world champions many time not a, not a only one time two time uh for for the world that medal you know that gives me another uh, uh, uh when i go for another competition especially games you know it's a lot of pressure it's so difficult to handle that uh, uh, pressure is uh, uh, well um i am uh, so lucky and uh, uh, so blessed that you know i already told i already mentioned that before also uh, uh that calmness i have already experienced for the last uh, so many years and 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 and, and i want that you know i i love lis- uh, to listen listening music also i just uh, listen music uh, my favorite whatever you know listen and stay calm and i am trying to do my best inside the ring i am trying to do if i do my best level you know of course the result will be automatically it will come uh, taken you know? care of so yeah, yeah. <laughs> i like that i like that uh, advaita <laughs> i want to come to you in the world of sport we always try to distinguish between two things what was a bad decision and what was a bad outcome how do you do this in business understand whether the decision i made was actually bad or whether i made a bad decision because of market variables the outcome wasn't what we wanted to are you evaluating things from these lenses yeah um i think you know as a company we put a lot of emphasis in sort of um before we take any risk any new business really defining what the business opportunity is what the five year plan looks like uh what could be the maximum possible loss what could the runway look like so i think you know we're generally pretty measured risk takers put a lot of thought into the decisions before we take them um so generally we tend to feel that once we've taken a decision we're going to commit to it and then we think that if you give it enough time and you keep going at it and you execute well then over the long run your outcomes are pretty decent so in general we don't really judge ourselves with an immediate decision outcome kind of variable we kind of first take our decisions then we like work on them for 5 6 years and then we think about you know did it work did it not so to really answer your question till now at least we we don't really like hammer ourselves about bad outcomes we we kind of just focus more on taking the right decision up front and then we feel that you know the outcome will eventually come it's a, it's a journey it's a you know there will be ups there will be downs there will be you know market variables might change but if like the core fundamentals of why you made that decision hold uh they should be okay so staying in alignment with this and something you said earlier about having long term focus one of the audience wants to know how difficult and how do you do this is maintain long term focus but but keeping abreast of short term challenges that may be thrown at you through either staffing or through market variables so what's the balance between looking long but dealing and fighting in the short term on a day to day basis yeah i think particularly once we went public there's obviously a lot of you know short term pressure um because you have to report your earnings quarterly and so forth so we do feel uh you know the pressure of kind of being able to you know keep up sort of on a short term basis um but i think the more sort of damaging thing you can do for your business is actually losing sight of the long term so i think to really answer this question what i'll say is look every day is a juggle to make sure that you're moving in the right long term direction you're also handling the day to day issues that are cropping up every day you have to do that juggle and you have to keep focused on both but i think the more worrying thing that can happen is that you actually lose sight of the long term so i think honestly it's just a decision we've made that we want to be a very long term oriented company and long term sort of management and founders and uh, even if that means a little bit of short term um you know pain or compromise it, it it's something we don't really think about because we think that we're always doing what's right for the company in the long run very often your short term and long term incentives don't fully align so we kind of always um are inclined to pick the long term ah this is very very true uh many we got a really interesting question from someone as well they said as a mom what is your advice to parents of kids that want to pursue careers in sport earlier on how do you support them and one of the interesting things that i get often asked is whilst pushing a child to play sport is passionate about it should we have a backup plan in academics and what's the balance between these two well uh, as a mother 
even I have four kids and uh, of course uh, my children, so my kids are uh, already uh, in sports and uh, they are uh, not very fond of in bo uh, boxing actually and very fond of it only in football. The twins are very fond of in football. So I do support of course. Uh, uh, you know, whatever the kids like, the children like, you know, the parents, if they su support, of, of course, at the same time, you know, uh, 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 at the same time that uh, we, 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 if we are not with them, if we are not with, uh, uh, with uh, you know, if we are not support to them, of course, uh, we cannot, we cannot, uh, 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 what we say that like, uh, for the, for them what what we are going to do education only education is also a part of part of life go please don't disturb so i'm so sorry uh it's okay hey pipi goy naima nang my room please control them it's oh my god this is i'm, I'm so sorry balancing roles it's balancing roles <laughs> See, at the same time, they yeah. need me, and uh, I already told and informed them to not to disturb me. I have a meeting, <laughs> so and so. But again, the kids are uh, all the time. They want, uh, they want me, and they around me. You know, they need me uh, 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 at the same time. And I, uh, 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 I just want to say to all the parents, if we have the kind support to our children, you know. Uh, uh, of course, they they can pursue uh, uh, whatever they you know in, in life. So uh, 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 it is uh, this is my humble uh, and uh, uh, humble request, and uh, uh, this is my advice to all the parents to support our uh, uh, kids, our uh, children uh, to go and play. And I not only whenever if they are not achieve uh, anything in in their uh, sport or activity. Uh, or uh, in in particular in their uh, games, so uh, I think that uh, uh, sport is also a part of fitness uh, fitness thing. So they are very needed at the same time. If they are not fit at all, and even the uh, education in other uh, you know uh, uh, platform, other uh, other other things in their uh, in their career. So they cannot. They cannot able to do. The fitness is very very important. So every yeah. field, every field. If if uh, if I say that you know, if I'm uh, speak this about you know, if we are not fit at all, if we are not fit, uh, uh we cannot able to achieve anything in 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 our life. Yes, definitely some can to uh uh by mean by talent or yeah. you know uh uh. uh extraordinary something like you know they push this self they push this themselves and you know hardship all the uh, uh challenges they accept and they can achieve but uh in a long term i think in the long term they cannot able to do whatever they want this is only for the short period when they are at the age of young you know they can do whatever but the all is i don't think they can do uh you know for you know long so fitness is the more important, and I request all the parents to support our children in sports and to pursue their dreams. No, no, I agree with you. Fitness is fundamentally important. And as you were talking about this, I think I grew up in an environment where we played so much of sport. One of the, the things that I constantly reflect on that I miss was, and I wish I'd learned, was the power of investing and the power of entrepreneurship in school as a subject as we go on. Uh, Advaita, you can also touch on that, but I want to ask you, in sport, we have the, the power of a team behind us. We understand, we value it. And this entire episode is brought together by AWS, and AWS is a supporting partner to many businesses like you. One is, what is the value of having a partner, and how do you determine how to outsource and what things to outsource to partners outside of your own uh, ecosystem as such because they sit completely out of it. In sport, we bring everything in and it's a very crucial decision to outsource something that you don't have control in that's such a core part of your entire business. 
Yeah. Um, I think, you know, uh, we we do outsource, obviously, you know, AWS is, uh, is someone that we work with. Um, and there are a couple of other technology partners also that we sort of work with. Um, but I would say that about 80% of what we do is all in-house, if not more. Um, so we are definitely a company who kind of likes to build all the capabilities internally. Um, and we think, you know, things like technology and such are so core to what we do that we have to have that expertise and build it internally. That's amazing. Advaita, we have a really, really interesting question that's coming from here. They said, in light of promoting female diversity, there's a female entrepreneur that's asked the question. She says that I've noticed that when I'm doing well and growing in the company, I get a sense that there's a lot of jealousy from other female colleagues in the ecosystem. What would be your advice and your message to other female members on how to accept success and support female colleagues in an ecosystem where we want this to grow? Yeah, I mean, I think I think that's a non-negotiable. I do think that we should all be supporting each other in everything and bringing a lot of um, kindness to each other, whether it's women to women or men to women or vice versa. So I think um, I, I definitely, you know, feel bad for this woman who's sort of facing that uh, kind of sentiment in the office. I mean, I think it sounds very petty. Uh, I think it's, it's totally uncalled for and reasonable. I think for me, more importantly, what I found is it's less about what other people are thinking and doing, but more about, I think as women, we need to make sure that we take up space, that we have voice. That's something that I've struggled with in, you know, in my earlier career. I mean, I did join Nike when I was super young. Um, yeah. I am still young. And and frankly, there are often occasions where I find myself, um, you know, making myself smaller than I really need to be. And I think that's a problem women in general, um, not to generalize, but women in general, I see a lot of women doing that. You know, to not irritate someone else, to not make someone else feel small with how you know how well you're doing, um, to not make someone else feel bad in terms of their lack of understanding or whatever. I, I often find that women, both myself as well as my colleagues, people who work for me, um, often make themselves uh, small. And so my my biggest advice is like forget <clears throat> what other people are doing or saying, but you just make sure that you're making yourself heard. Uh, if you have a strong point of view, if you know how to get something done, don't pretend like you, you're you smaller than you are. And that, that's like the number one piece of advice I would give to young girls, um, you know, women in early career and w women in the middle of the career. I think what I noticed is, is that when women actually become moms, uh, I find that they end up finally taking up a lot of space. But I think till they, till they go through that journey, I often find that women um, end up not taking up enough space. I think we I, have I, one more question. Yeah, I think go ahead, very, please. yeah, what I'm finding is that uh, as I'm watching a lot of women in my company, I'm finding that there's something very empowering for a woman as uh, she becomes a mother and she learns how to be a mother and, and sort of the juggling that that experience brings. She suddenly becomes like a real cheetah in the office. <laughs> I think like, all the all the office, like, you know, minor issues are just so minor in the grand scheme of what she has to deal with. Um, that I actually think that a lot of what women go through ends up making them like phenomenal leaders, phenomenal colleagues. Um, but it's just sort of the journey that one takes to get there. Amazing. Uh, Advaita, we got a question. I think people want to hear you speak a little bit about the experience and the benefits of listing Nika on the stock market and the experience around the IPO. Uh, I think we'll do a grave injustice if we don't give you the opportunity to speak about that in particular. Uh, given we have so many entrepreneurs that are listening. So do you want to share your thoughts about that, please? Yeah, I think um, the IPO was a phenomenal experience, right? I think um, it was kind of this, like sort of a milestone in in in, in our journey. Uh, we often describe it like it was like the child was graduating high school or graduating uh, college. And just so a really big milestone, a moment where we sort of stepped back and sort of um, really felt proud of what we had built. It was a very successful IPO. Um, you know, it is kind of one of India's first profitable e-commerce companies, um, you know, founded by women. So I think it was a really sort of surreal moment. Uh, for me personally, two, three things came out of that experience. The first was, um, sorry, just, uh, bad me, uh, I would say the first sort of experience I had out of that was, um, Again, like it's a journey. You can't think that, oh, like you IPO'd your company, it was super successful, front page of every newspaper, and now great, pat your back and it's all it's all done. It's like 
one week later, like, you know, sales were down and the customers were complaining and you still have to kind of deal with all of that. So every high is sort of temporary uh, was one learning. I think a second learning is the amount of discipline that comes into a company once it's public is just huge. Um, so I think that was one of the best things we did was going public was just made us as a company, us as managers, just so disciplined. Now we look into absolutely every angle of our business, every line matters, every cost item matters. Um, you know, the pressure of showing growth every quarter makes you work harder, run faster. The way we work now as a public company in terms of discipline, hard work, rigor is just of a different level. So if we had to redo it, I would totally do it again. I think it's the right thing for the company as an outcome. Uh, but I think the watch out for me was like, don't get too enamored by the highs of an IPO. Like it's just one small step on this, like, you know, multi-decade journey. And following on from this, people want to know, and they're asking about how you keep people motivated at every single step of the way. You know, in sports, we know what we're going for. The medal itself or the tournament itself is the motivator and everyone's driving towards that. You know, in business, you have different things that motivate different people at different stages. One is how do you interpret or how do you understand what are the motivators and drivers for each person? And how do they shift as you go pre-IPO, IPO, post-IPO? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, this is a really uh, dense question in the sense that I think uh, when you're running these companies, they're not like, you know, we're, we're not doing anything super crazy. We're actually just running a simple e-commerce buy-sell business. So the the number one task is of us as managers and leaders is to actually manage your people and get great teams together, keep them motivated and get the right outcomes. So 95% of what all of us as managers do is manage teams, manage people, and all you're doing every day is thinking about how to keep them motivated. <laughs> so I think there's like there are dozens of books that have and can be written on motivation of people. For me, like my personal mantras are um for, for me, like people are absolutely at the top. Like I, I do think that leadership is about serving the people who work for you. So I think just thinking enough about your people, thinking about how they're feeling, thinking about what they're doing, thinking about if it's enough, just putting your people first is half the battle. I'd say like a second mantra for me is I really have seen that if you lead your business from a vision and a mission statement and a very strong mission, that this is what we're trying to do team. This is what we want to be in 20 years. Then I think a lot of motivation comes and I've built within Nike, I've built a business where I didn't lead with enough mission and vision. And then I built a business where I've led with enough mission and vision. And I think motivation is easier in the latter. And sort of the last thing I would say in terms of a very tactical way of keeping people motivated that Nika believes in is like lean teams are the best. Don't overhire, don't have too many layers and levels, hire, you know, young people and give them massive roles. And when they are just so flooded with massive roles, responsibilities and work, then I think the motivation really keeps up because I do think the people we hire are people who actually just want to do great work. And they want to have enough work and they want to feel like they're growing. And if you get too many people into the mix, then obviously no one's growth is immense. So keeping teams teams lean is my last sort of piece of tactical advice in that regard. Interesting, interesting. That There's always that dichotomy in business about whether to hire someone who brings a lot of experience versus someone who's enthusiastic and brings a lot of energy. And from what I'm hearing, Nika goes with the latter, keeping it a flat organization, people, give them that responsibility, young, a lot of energy, a lot of enthusiasm to the table. Uh, really, really, really nice. Mary, someone's asking, if you weren't a boxer, would you have chosen any other sport, any other career for yourself, having been exposed to so much else now? Sorry, sorry. Can you please repeat the question? I just... They said, if you didn't, if you were not a boxer, would you so, have okay. chosen another sport, sport or another career that, that has interested you? Maybe, maybe another uh, career, not a, maybe not a sports uh, maybe artist, maybe singer. An maybe, artist. I mean, artist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think that That's are it. artists. Yeah. Thank you. Ah, okay. Amazing. And uh, Mary, one more question that we got for you was, they asked, was there ever a moment where you had to make a tough decision between your family and your sport, a big sporting event. And how did mm -hmm. you navigate that decision? Well, uh, I have, uh, you know, um, of course, if I describe this uh, uh, 
when my kid, the twins are very young and uh, uh, after go back in the camp, join, resume, resume the, you know, training and uh, join the camp. It was, uh, I think it was so tough for me. I was, you know, I can't leave them. Actually, they, they need me at the same time. And I also around all the time with them, actually. They are just uh, only uh, uh, four years, three, four years. And how can I live? That was is a very tough time. And uh, and the twins are, you know, that even one one kid, uh, it how to handle, you know, it was so tough for everyone. And it's twins. Twins, if I am not around them, if if I am not around them all the time, uh, it's always I think you know that you know uh, how can they will handle uh, uh, for the last uh, months or a, a year like so I was keep on thinking uh, how will I resume how will I go back in the game and uh, it not possible for me and I think that uh, to give up no sometimes I already thought the mind was uh, uh, you know it's negative again uh, it's better to give up and uh, later on. So I am going to do for them only, especially if I am, you know, go back and uh, resume my game, any competition, compete and uh, 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 well, that, you know, uh, whatever I get the uh, sponsor or, or uh, uh, you know, the uh, case, case price money from the government, uh, central government and the state government. That is uh not not for me uh uh you know uh, uh for my children only I am doing and uh, sacrifice everything for my children. So that was I think it was the tough for me and the fighting in the ring and a, a strong opinion and I you know uh, it, it, that was is not tough for me I think that <laughs> to leave my the kids. kids yeah leave the kids is very tough oh. uh, very hard yes. Of course, I absolutely understand. We we almost at the end of the show, Advaita. Last uh, note from you. Uh, do you have what can we look forward to? You know, what are your what is your next milestone that you personally have set for yourself? And maybe some parting words to any young female founders out there that want to follow in your footstep, that want to be inspired by your journey. Yeah, I think in terms of what's next for Nike, you know, we have a lot of bets kind of in businesses that are in motion, whether, you know, we got the core beauty business, then we've launched the fashion app and the fashion business. Uh, we have a distribution business. So I think um, just kind of heads down, executing on those well for the next couple of years and getting them all to a place of, uh, you know, really strong customer proposition and and sustainability would be uh, immediate thing, you know, the immediate sort of goalpost for us. So yeah, I don't think there's anything super exciting uh, beyond that to expect. We have taken most of our bets uh, over the last couple of years and now we're just being a bit heads down. Um, and I think in terms of advice, uh, you know, I already gave my number one piece of advice, which was to take space um, and, you know, be loud and, and not sort of, you know, bow down to anything or anyone. But I would say the second thing is, um, I do think the number one value in life is kind of courage. So just be courageous, be resilient. Um, don't really let anything kind of bog you down and, and just be able to kind of pick your head up and keep going. And I think it's 100% uh, uh, applicable for entrepreneurship in particular, but I, I would suspect it's probably applicable for everything. Absolutely. And be courageous and be curious is what we always say. Uh, Mary, thank you so much for being a part of us. Do you have any last words i mean you've given us a lot of inspiration as always but any words to any young athletes out there any female athletes and even entrepreneurs what are the mm -hmm. lessons and what should they remember from your journey well uh remember yes i have uh, a lot of memories in my you know career of of course there are so many uh leaders women leaders of course i i Advaita also, it's a you know the uh, uh founded by uh, Nike. So even other sports athletes, there are so many super uh you know uh 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 uh, uh ladies are uh, you know achieving the uh for the for the for for the field for their own field, 
and and I I really feel so proud. I really feel so proud to be a, a woman. Uh, you know, especially that women, whoever achieve, whoever come up. Uh, it's uh, uh now onwards. I was uh, uh I'm 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 looking. They are uh, they are also my uh role model because if if we don't uh, support each other. I, I I I really support every girl, every uh, you know, leaders, uh, or whoever achieve in a, a high level. I mean, I mean, in international level in sport, if we talk about, and uh, I encourage, I motivate uh, wherever I go. You know, the power, that power, uh, the woman power uh, we have. You know, we have to uh, extend. We have to stress, uh, uh, not for a short period, not for a you know, uh, uh for a, a time being, you know, as as much as we can. So I I am so proud to be a to be to be a girl, to be a a, a a woman, and to be a mother. Whoever that leader who comes up, and I am so appreciate and so thankful, grateful, uh, for their achievement achievement and and i feel so proud uh for them also thank you so much mary uh advaita mary thank you so much for joining us on aws torchbearers it was an absolute inspiration listening to you and learning from you to everyone who joined please stay tuned we're going to be announcing the winners of those who want signed gloves from mary i'll be doing that very very shortly but i'd like to Thank our presenting partner, AWS and Neonish, to our media partner, Business World, and our ecosystem partner, Thai Mumbai. Thank you so much for being a part and supporting us on this journey. To Mary and Advaita, thank you once again for being a torchbearer, thank and thank you so much for inspiring us. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you so much. You. Okay. Thanks, Mary. Thanks. We're, we're thank now going to move Rita. on. All the best. And we wish you all the best, Advaita. Yeah, same. Likewise. You're still young, still young. You can do as much you can. You can achieve more and more for the uh -huh. country. Okay. Yeah, yeah I wish you a lot of love. Lots okay. of love. Take care. Thanks, and everyone. Sa Sa thank you. Sa Bye. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so uh, much, Mary. For having us. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Thank you.